So Midnight Works, <laughs> I mean Des Vault Games, have just released a brand new simulator, or at least what they claim to be a simulator according to the eShop's features, but Raccoon Adventure Animal City Simulator 3D Farm Super Deluxe has your usual keyword game title, and apparently has you embarking on a thrilling journey through a highly interactive open world as a raccoon. How thrilling you ask? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So drop a like, subscribe for more Switch reviews and content, and let's get started. So I want to start off this review, which admittedly is more of a talk through, so spoiler alert, but trust me after watching this I guarantee you'll be thankful as you won't have to play through the absolute shitfest that I just did. But to start with, let me introduce you to my latest invention. Bullshit or vision. And this handy little gadget allows you to look at an eShop description and see exactly how much bullshit it's spouting, but let me show you this in action with this game. See how all that bullshit is highlighted in red, whilst anything the game actually contains is shown in green. So, an awful lot of bullshit in this one. But that's the magic of bullshit or vision. And I've already patented its design and there are plans for production in late 2023. Now getting into the game, the No Frills main menu in this one features a settings menu with nothing more than horizontal and vertical sliders, which I presume are the sensitivity settings, and a sound effects slider. And yes, no music whatsoever as real life doesn't have music and they've gone for all out realism with this one. We can then start the game though and are dropped into a small cave and take control of our raccoon. The left stick is used for movement whilst the right controls the camera and heading out into the wilderness we get our first glimpse of the stunningly detailed world with its vibrant visuals and realistic sound effects. We're able to attack with the ZL button, can crawl by tapping the L button and holding ZR will allow us to sprint. And it's worth noting that the camera constantly juts about like a bastard as though we're driving a fucking Morris Minor across speed bumps. But proceeding forward we're instantly set upon by this game's one and only enemy, the wolf, which with one swipe of its clawed mate kills us, sending us back to the start of the game. The health bar in the top left is almost entirely for showing this one, as no matter where or when you encounter these foes, they'll always kill you with a single strike, and while the radar in the bottom corner marks the presence as red dots, it sometimes just doesn't, and it also doesn't direct you where to go, so for the most part it's practically useless. Now your objectives in the game are instead indicated by yellow markers in the world, and our first one lies a little over 30 metres away, but getting there turns out to be a real fucking chore. Firstly, you must get past a pack of wolves which have stupidly large aggro ranges. Next, you must crawl through this hollow tree trunk which offers some protection, but again, sometimes doesn't. And finally, you must hop your way up some rocks to the other side. But let me tell you now, the jumping and platforming mechanics in this game are absolutely fucking atrocious and are amongst some of the worst I've ever experienced. Not only is the jumping delayed, taking about a second or so before it registers, it also doesn't provide much in the way of height, offers no real in-air control, and after you land you'll also keep on moving, which you'll soon see proves to be more than a little frustrating. After conquering this short climb and dropping into the next area though, you'll then be introduced to the game's throwing mechanics, which have you picking up items with the X button before holding ZL to aim them and then releasing it to throw them. And I had assumed that throwing rocks at wolves would stun them, but after countless attempts it turns out that I was mistaken and that rocks only serve as distractions. But all in all it took me about 20 attempts before I was finally able to make it through this second pack of wolves and onto the next area. Now here I found a maze of dust filled canyons and a lonely looking fox hungry for a bite to eat, so I set out in search for a snack for him. Proceeding through the canyon I encountered another wolf barring the way which inevitably killed me, but after a little more searching, taking random turns back and forth through the canyon, I eventually stumbled across a patch of mushrooms, and I have no idea how I was supposed to actually reach this normally, but I ended up scaling an outer wall, snagged a mushroom, fell off a bridge and then swam back to shore, returning to the fox who happily gobbled up the mushroom. 
The fox then proceeded to follow me and, rather hesitantly, I escorted it to the wolf, which it then proceeded to maul to death, opening up the exit to the next area. Now, this area contained a cave with a house symbol on it, and upon entering I encountered some floating tooltips which I deduced constituted as this game's upgrade system, but in the local area I found some campsites containing various items which I then had to return to the cave to activate said upgrades. Actually acquiring these items though took far more effort than it was worth, as the simple act of jumping up onto a park bench was turned into a 5 minute ordeal, with me first having to jump onto one of the seats before I could actually reach the tabletop itself, and god knows how many attempts it actually took me to achieve this. The items themselves are broken down into three categories, snacks which increase your damage, fruits which increase your health and electronics which increase your speed for some reason, and returning two of these gives you a single upgrade to the relevant stats. As expected though, these have very little impact on gameplay, aside from perhaps the damage upgrades, as there are quite a few small wolf pups in the area, and without the upgrade I couldn't actually damage them, but with a single point in damage I could down them with three hits. And the speed boost is also handy due to the size of these areas, but the game also has a hidden stamina bar, and when that runs out your speed is reduced to a crawl until it recovers. Now, there's not much else to say about this next area, I was simply tasked with finding a lighter and a firecracker to break open a wall, and after locating the firecracker, I went in search of the lighter. Rather handily, key items are also highlighted as blue dots on the radar, and I located one of these beneath this barn-like structure, but it turned out that the item was actually located somewhere above and inside the barn, and that the only way up was this ladder, which after many attempts proved impossible to scale. But after further searching, I eventually found the liar in a nearby tent, and blew open the wall to find my worst nightmare a monstrous fucking jumping puzzle. Now, this big bastard took me about 10 minutes to complete despite its simplicity, with me constantly tumbling off ledges and mistiming jumps, but after some careful platforming and more than a little luck, I eventually reached the marked platform and was launched high into the air to land on the barn's rooftop. Once inside, I headed straight for the blue marked object, but shock horror, it turned out to be a trap, as a cage dropped from above and the screen went black. Awakening from my shock induced coma, the camera panned outwards, sweeping wildly across the surrounding landscape, which appeared to be some sort of summer camp or school but the path it took highlights some key items in the area, and after escaping my confines, it was then down to me to retrieve them and return them to construct a pulley system and open the exit door. Now the items we need are spread throughout this area, and the first three of these are easy enough to snag, with one located in a wooden structure near the gate, another inside a football court, and the final within a small office behind a minor jumping puzzle. But the hardest part about recovering these items is the fact that this area is also full of those wanker wolves, and not the little ones, the big ones, which were still unkillable, still spotted you a mile away, and still kill you with a single hit. They also don't appear to have any discernible patrol pan for you to work with, and often glitch out, standing right in front of where you need to go, which on several occasions was the door but luckily I was able to make a mad dash for it and return the objects before they managed to kill me. Now, the last couple of items are a little tougher to reach, made only more difficult by the fucking wolves everywhere, but the first of these is inside one of the bunk houses, requiring more shitty jumping to obtain flares and lighters to blow up several doors. The final item though is where the developer actually made an attempt at integrating some true puzzle solving mechanics. You see, the object is located within a warehouse, but in order to reach it you need to scale these siege towers, and don't ask me why they're here, because I've got no idea. But once you finally struggle your way to the top of them, you'll then find a gap which, unsurprisingly, you're unable to bridge with a single jump. Instead, there's a platform here which you can move by putting weight into these buckets, and rather handily, a nearby rock can be utilised to do so 
Only this is buggy as hell and fails to work half the time, and when attempting to throw the rock into the basket, it'll often clip right through it. But if all the stars align, the rock will land in the basket and the platform will take you across the gap, with your final challenge being one last shitty jumping puzzle to snag the weight and then finally return it to the door. Now after all this, I had presumed this to be the final level of the game due to its complexity, which says all you need to know about the depth of this game. But after returning the final object and opening the exit door, rather foolishly, I had assumed that I would be treated to some kind of ending for my efforts. However, I was a little over optimistic with my expectations, and instead I got this. To be continued and I was then unceremoniously booted back to the main menu. Deja vu of deep space, anyone? Well, needless to say, Raccoon Adventures is an absolute fucking travesty of a game which wouldn't be fit to be called a game even several generations ago, let alone on the Switch. It consists of four levels, none of which show any real creativeness to them, these mechanics are poorly implemented, lacking any sort of polish, no doubt thanks to there being no real testing done on them, the jumping is a buggy mess, the upgrade system is pretty much pointless, and the game's only redeeming feature is that it takes less than an hour to complete. But like every other game I've played from Des Vault Games, Raccoon Adventure offers very little in the way of gameplay and it begs the question how they can even consider themselves to be a development studio when they're constantly putting out this calibre of shite. Just give it up lads, get yourselves a real day job, and save yourselves the embarrassment of being associated with Des Vault Games or any of the other scumbag scammers currently plaguing the Switch eShop. Now I will of course be feeding the details of this one directly back to Nintendo because setting aside those fake screenshots, that eShop listing features one of the most misleading and deceptive descriptions that I've ever read, but you can help me out with this by sharing this video to spread the word about these scam artists, and be sure to check out my scam games playlist for more on them as well as others of their ilk. And I recently received a false copyright takedown notice from one of the fuckers, <laughs> Midnight Works, so I need all the help I can get with this one. With that said though, I do hope this one helped you out, and if it did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more like it, as well as regular deals videos and reviews of actual Switch games, and until next time, thanks once again for watching, take care of yourselves, and game on.